I wish I were on yonder hill. If I were, I'd sit and cry my fill. Until every tear would turn a mill. Skuze to a wurnin slum. Shul, shul, shul arum. Shul go sokwit agus shul go kyun. Gaelan <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're all very welcome to uh, the 11th uh, Feda uh, this year. Uh, we have a mixture of, of themes centred mainly on Limo Flaherty this year. Uh, his short storytelling, as you've probably been seeing while you were having your tea and coffee here. We have an exhibition of photographs which Kathleen McMahon will present. Uh, we're having also then, as you know, uh, later on in the, in the uh, near the Memorial Garden a stone lifting event, which is uh, linked, we're linking it to the story by Limo Flaherty, which is written in English and translated by Michal O'Connell here uh, in, in uh, the collection of, of short stories of Liam's he edited, or he uh, published a couple of years ago, about 2020, yeah. Uh, and then tomorrow morning, uh, as we also, uh, talking about the, Flaher the O'Flaherty's, Liam and Tom, we also talk about their uh, political heritage and that the whole con historical context uh, we usually do that on Sunday morning and this year we're talking about Michal Mwilain who was a very well known uh, supporter of James Larkin, uh, a trade unionist political uh, activist in Dublin. Uh, he was involved in, in sort of inner city Dublin politics for a long time and he was also founder of Kosht in the Boshti which was an organisation set up in uh, 1934 to bring working class children from Dublin to the Great for it wasn't really Irish college, just so as they live in the Great Up and mix in and live the life of the local people in the Great Up. So Michael Whelan was a very uh, interesting uh, person from that point of view. He felt that the working class of the cities and the working class of the rural areas should uh, should be linked up and that the, these children should come uh, to the Great Up to learn Irish and not only just Irish but to soak in the culture and some of them did become the, the occasional channel singer and channel step dancer came out of the, the adventure. It went on for the uh, question of the Boshti, lasted over 20 years and was funded at the beginning by public collections and trade union support. So it was a very interesting, uh, very interesting, uh, uh, you say, venture that, that he set up. So that's the, the programme for, for, um, for uh, today and uh, tomorrow. Uh, all of this would not be possible without a lot of work by various members on the committee and I want to thank, uh, thank them all. Uh, we're also supported, well supported locally by uh, various people. Uh, here at Kilmurvey House, who uh, welcome us every year for Kunji Fortu and Kudivian, August the Kanchi Kofahu Lincha, being which T. Joe Mikey Gomi Freshen, Martin Jadona, Garam Skull at the local secondary school, uh, always uh, gives us use of their, their, uh, their art room or their hall for projections or poetry readings or whatever. We have different, different things, different years. A piece of film one year, a piece of theatre the next, uh, poetry the, the following year. Uh, and uh, also then we have the, 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 if you like, the local support. Uh, I'd like to thank Mary and Neil Whelan who's been doing liaison for us here. She's here in the uh, Mary is doing the liaison with the Dini Yoga of Vasilev, Tronoma, Vasilev Ishke. And the Fondman Taki, if it's the Matar Bebuy, as the Gun Taki, if it's the Tomajir Aud, or Agashi Exul, Udras Nagwet, or the Gazali Nagwet, or the Hogan Taki, if it's going to be in. Uh, for us in the way, get our this Cody Hunday the guide of the economic rural community development section in Galway County Council. So we have various um, various uh, uh, supporting organisations here who, who uh, give us uh, who renew their support every year, and we're very grateful uh, for that. So without further ado, as we're running a wee bit late, I'll introduce the speaker, Kanchor, and Fiadhlaeach, Gwanjo Michael O'Connell, 
ní gaithim deich mí agus ar náin agus na dhéanann an trabhaí tú léir deoil gaeilge mar tá ar chun scríofa ge uis gaeilte tá drámaí aistí ag tá cruisí cur a cruisí gur chinn a chinn ag súl agus deoil a stair cur a dhá uilleach ag é. Is é bhun a chlóí a chomhacht a dhá bhun a chéad cairr chun bliana an nish agus a tá a sábhaí hén cuir na bhunin tá chéad a chlóí a chomhacht a oibh cur chun cinn litsíocht na gaeilge agus go dhéanann cruisí cúil agus orrán ag tú freisin. Agus in éirinn agus thar sáide tá obair obair na gach oibh déanta gníomh le le bliana tofada is a réimse sin. So Michael Cunéil has translated this book here. His his recent most recent because there's his company now sells Dúil by Liam O'Farrell. They've taken over Dúil. He and and they published the book of short stories by Tom O'Farrell in Wrath and War. And Liam O'Farrell has Rowish gave the book stories translated from. English into Irish by Michal Rauschgate, published in 2020. Uh, they're very, uh, they're superb translations in near enough, I suppose, what Liam would have, would have done himself, with the occasional Koshariga Konamara expression thrown in. <laughs> Michal leaving his, his mark there, in, and there are a few places here and there. But, but anyway, uh, so it's, it's uh, if you like, it's a, a re, uh, how do you say, a hukhusui and a scale Liam brings the stories back into Irish, some of them were. You get a very strong Irish language feel from them in, in English. So Michal uh, is going to talk uh, about the, uh, well I think he is anyway, about, about the, the work of the translation, the work of translation uh, and the insights uh, he, he got into Limo Flaherty uh, and particularly his short story writing, I think, uh, in the work of translation. So in Irish, for Michal, er er Liam, er chud skrid nørrta, er laus a chud skrid nørrta, agus ei gashtu, na skerta seo, go, go, I was dear solid Jacob and brother one for a dinner one at a boil and a lure, but it will be my jam and be a lure about that. Nach will in him lay enough while in a good yard and yard, and I'm Aggie Danny, the green child, full of being the plain to father. I was Adam and Jewenny, Ban Oso, Ban Rio, I was Ban Rogelioskert, I was free by play, I was good in with your baggy, the name of the college, and for she was in his to share the name. So fuck men, Tarda make me hold it. Good morning, Mahat. I was coming to have some good to have a talk. I've been told to make this bilingual, so I've been practicing by my Konamara English for the last few weeks. Good morning, I'm some good. I was good morning, and good morning. As the whole thing is, I do be on your be on. You take a nap or two, it's good. I was going to be laughed at for a few. I was good morning, fresh and as my hour is over, so I've been here talking. No more problem with just going to take the mark. Uh, I, I, I told him I was standing over here by the window, um, where I could have left the light, but he closed the curtains. <laughs> <laughs> and I now realise that the way I know is more important than what I'm going to say. <laughs> I came to the work of, uh, I come to the work of the Empathy State of my life as a writer and a translator, and as a publisher as well as a post. Uh, not really, I think, as a critic as mentioned in the programme. I'm familiar with his work since I was a child to the poem, The Blah of Kragge. As far as I know, as far as we know, because I didn't do the search, he only wrote three poems, I think, in his life, and we included them in that book so that they would be available. The Blah of Kragge is by far the best and has been anthologized over the years in many books, including in Sean Thomas' uh, New Versia, published in 1950. And many people think it's a Don because it is so similar to a Don that Martin O'Giron would write. And I remember when I was in CIC getting um, requests to reproduce the blog of Kreiger by Martin O'Giron, so <laughs> I'm not the only one to, to think. His collection, Dool, was on the leaving search in, in my day, but um, in Kosh the Ain in Galway, we did Skoshkirta instead by Porto Conan and Peg, which I, I, I liked a lot, I, I would have to say. And um, it, it baffles me when you hear people, you know, from the city say that Peg is, is alien to them and all that. We, in the West at that time, had to read Shakespeare and <laughs> Jane Austen and the English in Shakespeare and the way of life in, in Pride and Prejudice is, is as far removed from, from, from the way it was as a peg would be from a shin, shin, shin uh, Which means that I came across to, I suppose, for the first time in UCG, uh, where Novik Makumbi was in the Echto Gelge, and we did dual and Kiss Dialog by Moria and Koskila by Okain. They were the three books on the short stories. And, he sh and I was beginning to write at the time, and he shocked me 
one morning when he picked out a, a story by Morden and said the first three pages of that should be cut, he should have stopped. He should have started the story on the fourth page. And that was a kind of an eye opener for me. About Thule, I remember him saying that it was a very good collection except for the last story, Epic and Hush, uh, which is not a great shot story. And of course, I would agree with him now, even though it is, it is a great read. Is my other Lucy Garsk of the Duel is far ahne again bubble and skinner or in the cream of Larto. Good even Ari Tar and Cruz of Ari Shin, my classic, and my count in the Lucy Garsk of the Is Tar Dar Pai to make it here. Ta question half of the name get the Horde, as she will the Garsk of the Duel. I was not told me large it could ask you on, here a good smoker. Shakas Bay did thin bock dot on fear, epic and push on Taylor on Harry Go. Fagen sig själv så artaste de fenomenen, alltså en kursioskare. Vi är nu en jämförande marknader gällde därför. Är nu i vi är nu vad som är marknader färre. Ni är vana med att ha sasna och se mellan kaffrasen, att se skriven är en färre liam och flärti. Ni inte ser det här sen man gör det med skrivsa, att se en guide om art skriven av de vanliga mag. Och hela jättet och kroje det. Skrivs as the Jacob go Ushka the Berlo, and the Susta Kate Octu Garshka the Fat. About 160 stories, I believe, you wrote in English, and then this 18 or 20 in in two. So we talk about the <coughs> stories altogether. O'Flaherty often in his letter refers to many of his short stories as sketches, as if he was downgrading them to some degree. And it would be fair to describe some of them as sketches are like to read. Some of them can be very short description of people, places, etc. But of course, there are also the great short stories in both languages. Unfortunately, most of his work is out of print in English. Uh, Seamus Cashman of the Wolfham Press, who is a friend of this, this column, I believe, uh, did great work over the years bringing them back to print as did Karen, it was Thomas McShimon, who recently published The House of Gold, Hollywood Cemetery, and The Martyr. But probably his best work, Famine, is out of print for years. His best known work, I would say, The Inferno, which was filmed, is out of print. And Scout, <coughs> the other novel, big novel based around here, is out of print. As is, I would think, nearly all his short stories. Um, on both sides of the, land, of the Atlantic, and he would have been published in the US as well. Some year, 1999, Wolfhound uh, published a beautiful production of his collected short stories. Uh, there were three <coughs> big hardcover books in a, uh, books in a box, uh, beautifully packaged, something that any publisher would have been proud of. And um, <coughs> it was an edition of 1,000 copies, that is also not available anymore, and um, unfortunately, uh, Wolfhound aren't, aren't around anymore either. Uh, but all his short stories are there, uh, including one in Irish poet, which was omitted from the duel, uh, for a good reason, because it wasn't a very good short story, it's more of a sketch. Uh, it is, however, included in, in this selection, Mar Agusin Egilera. Och så där går det om att skriva det går jag i det här snöstånd. Jag tycker att det är hårda och lite korsgård eller en månchen för oss när vi är med här. Ta runt tegel skärt som det jag ska skärta dukt när vi får det för skillen. När vi bäder urenta är det skinna i tegel skärt så bäder vi går går är det tegel går går det skärt som det är bra. Kvinnor skärta vi är knusar vårdfamt och du säger mig att jag ska med en gästju när skärta så. Round the back, she could see the skirt is far and hanging on him. Keen a huge ledu and a hair. Marga had soon taken the old skirt of Bonnie and Ari. No, a long sour to tell you, you know, one came off the heart of our tenacity in the skirt. Who went to the end of the world, killed more than just John Mullen and just Darn of Hill. So, who went to the end of the world, tossed up in a fag on the skirt, Bonnie and Ari, the skirt of Ari, gone more. After Neil Luhuncha, he doesn't use a place name, he composes place names. He uses place names 
kind of like far places like he uses Bali, uh, Bali Wahan, Disneyland, and Castle, Castle Guard, and Kunamara, of course, he uses them when, you know, when the story is not based there, but he's referring to them. Unlike his brother, um, Thomas, who, who, who used um, place names. Gyorsh Gerthet in Skatatan, Jahent Muhurin. Yatomar is in Skerthet in Dood, no bed in his heart. Lekoshi Unruk, as Intaho, er heel is an intimate dinner, is an angry tonto. Bidish Lumi and Norid, no need, no hard hair. Who the man is Muna with the one, Dinada, who will do for Mana, ain't thou, Spiv, Liam of Larta. Um, Hunish Kashpishin, Salim Chigwil, Gorshka the Bear the Egger, um, talk Homa, when you fall, no, 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 uh, every selection is personal. And as I said, I have about 160 stories to choose from. Most of the stories I liked, but obviously I would have to make a selection. In my first selection, I have selected 50 stories, the number which I agreed with his agent in London. Uh, but when the final selection was done, I have translated 33 stories. About the ones I left out after second reading, I have various reasons to do so. Some are quite long, like The Painted Woman, over 20 pages, I think. Some a bit weird, although interesting, like Pasta or The Valley of Old. Uh, another Lament, which is possibly a portrait of Kunlogege, which would be interesting to translate that into Irish. And I'm not saying some people in Kunlogege would be too happy. <laughs> uh, there are funny stories like Pay the Cruiser, uh, and the bath, and a story that's everything but funny, uh, the cutting of Tom Bartle. But I, all of the 17 stories I omitted left aside, and maybe one day I would return to them. And if I did, that would be a very different selection uh, <coughs> to this one that I did. So to move on to the chosen ones, as I said, it's a personal choice as always, and in this case I'm sure I was doing, if I was doing the selection right now, it would be different rather than if I did it six, six years ago. That's, that's the way it is with, with writers and translators. On a personal note, I am not crazy about stories about animals or birds or the landscape or nature. And of course, Liam O'Flaherty is an expert at such stories, probably the best writer in Irish at such stories. They are great stories without question, but I just feel a short story is not a short story if there's no human being. Or uh, maybe I should say another way so that you won't get angry at me. I at least much prefer to read stories about people rather than stories about birth of an island. So she stood one a beam of law agam, I was make round in Skerta. Stood elevated a gurame gira on smino, gamigerbe a gina garni in yetcha no gravia. Another reason for my selection, perhaps I was trying to fill in gaps in Irish language literature. Um, when I did my MA in history, um, whatever, nearly 40 years ago, uh, I studied creative literature as a historical source. So I picked Kunamara all in and read 80 books. So I was, so I was doing it now, I have to read 200 books. <laughs> so I read about the 80 books, Filiat, Gjallskjert, the Burskjert, and evaluated them as a historical source, which was interesting, you know, Okai, no Konrad, or Jeron, Dool, etc. But in a way, because of that, possibly I'm inclined to like stories that show a community, that show life in community, etc. Uh, Ach, nach Spiegel in the Janga Hain yet, the Dossa. Schienem could leave shot good comfort, sir. So the Abbekena, who offered Gorshir the Farki Hunger, I was watching Hain, a whole scream nori co amshira. I was a noe in the other dude. So on the scale to show, um, shown the way of life, uh, one of them is the challenge. Duvan, uh, based in Galway City on a fair day, and you have the sleepers cleaned up the mess after the horses, you have the tinkers um, and their antics, you have the people drinking and fighting, etc. So I thought it's a great atmospheric story. And there's nothing like it in Maker. You know, there's probably very few like it in English. 
but I, I felt that was really uh, filling a gap if I would uh, translate that in Irish. The other one, uh, clock nyrt, or the stone, which you will hear about later. This is one of the old past tense in every parish in Ireland once upon a time, and you'll hear lots more later on in the day. I know O'Giron mentioned this past tense that they used to do it here on, on Sunday evenings mostly. So I was, I was drawn to it, to it for that reason. But of course, it's a great human story, and indeed a story that involves a whole village and the cycle of life and a society being familiar with where they came from and what and who will be for them. Ending with the younger teenagers adults celebrating the memory, the achievements and the life of the old dead man by continuing with what he had done, challenging each other to lift the big stone. So I was surprised there was nothing like that written in Irish in fiction, and maybe there isn't anything else like it in, in English either, because it, it was, as you hear later, common in, in most parishes around the country. Other stories about filling gaps would be Scherz of Finglaid, Phil Haggard, stories about the priest, or Flaherty was probably obsessed with them, <coughs> and the way they ruled society, their power, their lack of humanity. And I guess he wanted to expose that. To quote him in one of his letters to Mary Callaghan in the 3rd of April 28, and he's comparing Ireland with Germany and the different life in Germany, he says, But Ireland is a shame. This country is a horror. One can smell priests even on a can day. <laughs> <laughs> and he described in another place in Ireland, It's too frightful, Desha. All those black insects crawling about, and the atmosphere of dark hostility they leave in their prison. So you could argue that O'Flaherty was on a mission, but not the sort of missions you would associate with the clergy at the time. <laughs> so I have, I have, I think, 20 about five of them. There are more. Um, indeed, O'Flaherty set me thinking. The other two great writers from, from the period, Port O'Connor and Martin O'Kine from our area, of, anyway, um, I don't think they have a priest as <coughs> a main character in any of their stories even though O'Kine has six collections, one published after his death. O'Connor probably must have stories about priests somewhere, uh, because he wrote over 500 stories. Um, he probably wrote the same story twice or three times, uh, sometimes for the money, uh, sometimes because he had forgot he had written before. <laughs> uh, and he has one story about the bishop, a great one, Anna Miasper. Uh, but but, I, was, but um, I stand to be corrected on this, uh, but there's no major priest character in, in all kinds of communist job stories, which is kind of amazing. Uh, so Leo Flaherty, this, this, this will have back up for sure. Ofra uh, Lokko, the offering, which is about, um, you know, at, at the funeral, uh, there'd be a table like this, and a uh, white linen tablecloth, and everybody would bring their sixpence or their shilling, you know, the offering, and, and, and that was, and it's a brilliant story, and the priest there reading this, I suppose, to read, but just keep an eye, and because it would be by insulting that somebody was expected to leave a shilling if they only left sixpence, you know. Um, some people from the lower class might be accepted, sixpence might be enough. Uh, but if you were fairly well off, you were expected to leave the shilling, and it would be an insult to the priest and to the dead person not to, not to give that. So, uh, the Inquisition, this Juhan, in a seminary where one of the lads broke some of the rules, and there's this big this Juhan inquiry about it. Uh, the outcast on Diberto uh, about the unmarried mother who came to the priest for help uh, with her child and he wasn't given any help and uh, unfortunately she, she jumped into a lake and committed suicide uh, after that. Uh, Paul McPeerus has kind of a similar story called Indiago Deal, you know, uh, on the priest read the woman from the altar, as used to be the phrase, I, I remember me, <laughs> an American priest last year and had a discussion about it, and he never heard that phrase being read from the altar, so I had to explain it, explain it to him. He couldn't believe it, but it, it, it did happen. Mm -hmm. uh, another one of these, in the Sagart, opening uh, down the devil's work. It's about a man who keeps working away, fishing on Sundays instead of going to Mass. And got away with it for a long time, to the envy and jealousy of his neighbours, because he was doing very well for himself, financially, 
but in the end, he pays for it, financially also. The priest, as Ofrati says, playing the long game, knowing all along he would have to repent and be forced back into his holy heart, and that is what happened. Well, that is a common way to know, scared to be asset, can't they, who might get it? would go asset him to learn, and we have the asset him to learn. Tom Asset got the one, of course, you know, which is a beautiful story by by O'Connor, uh, but really for, for, for young people. Um, but O'Flaherty has, I think, four or five stories in, in, the, um, in, in, his, in his collected stories about donkeys. So I think I did three of them. In general, in the Scherta, uh, the stories in Rao Scherta are mostly based on Connemara and the Iron Islands. Stories that could have been naturally written in Irish, or should have, maybe could have, should O'Flaherty ch choose to do so. Of course, O'Flaherty never refers to Native Ireland, as I have said before, and he uses Anuka Dale. I also translated a few of the Dublin stories, which I liked. One of the most powerful is Black Maid, the Pod, which is about the aftermath of the Civil War and the founding of the new state. It's a story about those who did well and those who didn't out of the turmoil. Those who did well in political life, not because of the contribution they made in the fight for freedom, but by being in the right place at the right time are knowing the right people. And those, of course, who fought for freedom, but did not fit into the new state that was being created and were left behind or left with nothing. <coughs> so now, a hundred years later, it's a very interesting story and, and well worth three. And I, act I actually adapted it for stage and sent it to the Kyberg to, to Phoebe, but um, got no feedback. Um, my own had wrong on this, you know, and two or three of the stories from some which I translated it would do very nice short plays. Bailey was spinning the harm in each other, and either the either the way to construct it. But definitely that one it, it's a very it's a great story. I also liked a few stories based on Sunny Beach abroad and one in Cuba, South of Bain again. So why translate the stories of Oflarty at all, if you might ask. Well, sadly, as I said, they're not available, even in English. Um, there's no Shane's Castman anymore involved in publishing. And unfortunately, recently, we lost Karen and Thomas of, of Nuskirta. Um, there is a new edition of Dune available for some years, and his place, Darkness, is also available. But as I said, um, none of his soft stories are available. Perhaps there's another reason for this. Publishers might consider not borrowing with O'Flaherty's work, and his stories belong to another age, another society, a fair bit removed from today's society, today's world. Even the Connemara, the um, the Dublin stories in, uh, in, this, in, in this collection. No, it's not the Dublin or Connemara or the Ireland of today, it's far from it. It's another way of life altogether. And he's not alone in this. The same is true of his contemporaries like Charles Fillon, uh, Frank O'Connor, big and influential short story writers, highly rated in their day, but now more or less completely out of print, not even much talked about anymore. Only the odd second hand book to be found in second hand bookshops. Uh, an exception would be um, Benedict, Benedict Kiley, his work has been uh, reprinted recently. Perhaps it's one thing uh, we Irish language publishers and uh, do better than English ones is we keep books in print for longer, especially the classics. Or maybe it's for a worse reason that some books in Irish sell so little and so slow that it takes them years to go out of print anyways. <laughs> uh, for example, in the classic, the shop here, um, Koshkvilar and Child Lord, you know, two of the best shop world collects by Martin Khan, they sell about three, four, maybe maybe five copies a year. Um, for your information, Rausch Gerta sold about 400 copies to date, or two today, that is. Uh, published over three years ago. It's a bit disappointing, in a way, but at the same time, it's average for an Irish language book. Uh, when they came out three years ago, the pandemic was on, etc. But at the same time, I felt, for Irish language readers, there's no need to introduce him a priority. He, he would be 
you know, anybody who knows Anthology language would have known what he was thinking about. Clarity is not like promoting some obscure writing from the 50s that, that um, Irish language readers would not have heard of. But of course, it's not about sales, it's about the art. I believe he could and should be translated into Irish in a way by translating stories into Irish, I was reclaiming what should have been, perhaps, reclaiming him more as an Irish language writer for Irish language readers and speakers. <coughs> Lots of, of stories, as I said, are rooted in the island here uh, in, and in, in Connemara. And it was natural that they would be in Irish, like the three McDonough, Martin McDonough plays I did into Irish, uh, The Beauty Queen of the Man, The Lonesome West, The Cripple of Inchnall, which are based in Arne and in Connemara. They worked very well in Irish, and, and you know, they looked like as if they originated in Irish. As I often say, if Martin McDonough's father had stayed in that morning, he would probably be in that morning now, <coughs> now writing these, these plays in, 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 in Irish himself, or working for TG Cahill and barely getting by. <laughs> 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 if, if my father had gone to London like, like four of his sisters did, I would probably be in London now, <laughs> uh, writing plays in English, and I'd probably be a millionaire. <laughs> 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 Ach, <laughs> Ah, my yard at the whole me person, I was at the heel person. I was the vision, Visha and that figure, and scared of my children, maybe. East journey in the hill, the whole flower in the wall with East Donna. After such a low wall, the Shindas of the Dower the He was among the first group of 88 original, original members who joined East Donna in 1981, but he died in 1984. So it didn't make a huge difference financially to to him at that time. Had East Donna been there 30 or 40 years earlier, it would have made to have been a different story. We don't have time here to discuss in detail, as I said, why he wrote so, so, so little in Irish. If he was alive today, would he be writing in Irish? Perhaps my guess is I think he would have written a lot more in Irish than he did. But perhaps he would still be mostly writing in English. But conditions are better now for writers and artists. Arts Council for Solis, Ali Nguyen, commissioned from the likes of TG4, etc., and East uh, It is, you know, writers in general are better off than they would have been in his, in his time. About my process in doing these translations. makes <laughs> It is an simple, the most jeder long, can more an adjective. We make many well kids a lot while they are here. We still simply jeder man a hele eik o kunde. After no eik she walert it be a jo kain. I was, you know, the re man hegen walert they am do kain on shisur a ibrio a gjalshirta a hiro o kain in nordjet. Uh, the reason why Okarn is as good as short story writers is because he, he broke the rules, basically. But to return to Leon's Irish, I know he used many words uh, of Munster Irish in his stories. This is not surprising because I believe his teacher in, in Black Rock College and his editor in Sorcerer of Steel were from Munster, and some of the Munster words could have come in that way. The editing, but of course, as we know well, the Iron Islands are geographically nearer to Clare and Munster, and they use words here that we don't use in Connemara, and they're in Doom as well. Like, of flash of Paldiao, you know, we say 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 Paldiao, you is a time shot, I can hear the crag, I can sit down. Fucking Rodin. 
boarding, boarding, I know boarding in English, so never a book boarding. So we, we wouldn't have them worked in, in, in Kunbar Reich, but or did on and of the heart to them. Anyways, as we all know, it's all great in Kunbar, not great in all in Lorin. And I wasn't going to start learning the foreign language at my age. So I said to myself, considering everything and bearing in mind, my worldwide audience reading as Gelke, the translation would be in Konevada Irish. Bodini, not Rotini, I was watching them. But O'Flaherty had lots of words in vocabulary in English actually that I hadn't, that I, I didn't understand. And I found, my, I found myself going to dictionary very often again and again for, for the meanings. And also to have different options. Sometimes you know. The Irish word for word in English, but in your dictionary, it gives you more options. In such cases, there might be three or four words given in Irish, but very often also, one of them would stand out and would be the obvious choice. This is a translator's job to pick one word, his choice, out of three or four or more. They often might have the same meaning in general, but very often also, only one of them might be the correct word for a particular sentence, or situation, or context. And also to increase the variety of words, another reason to go to the dictionary, uh, like you come across a clock of stones in all the stories, and it's endless the words um, we have for stones in our clock, karinkri, maule, faulte, haltri, jakri, same as the rain, I think there were over 20 words in Irish for the rain, doesn't stop the rain. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing I found uh, in his short stories, a uh, bit tedious at times, I would have to admit, was his description of people. I think this is true with the era he was writing in. Like he might introduce, introduce a character like in the story Black Mill, and he might write half a page, or two quarters of a page about the person. A full description of the way they walk, the way they sit, uh, what they wear, what kind of clothes they wear, their face and their features. And this might go on for half a page or two quarters of a page. And, you know, uh, um, like in Irish, he has, yes, I remember when I was reading Do, talking about some lady, her hairstyle, he said, was in the steel spawn in the Spanish style. Now, I hadn't got a clue what the <laughs> Spanish style was. Uh, Do is, by the way, varied in Spanish, so. French people should have, shouldn't have the problem I, I have. But of course, this all came from this traveling around the world. And so, as I said, sometimes these descriptions that they go are not. Now, they are great descriptions, very well written, wonderful pictures created, but they often stop the story. Nowadays, I don't think this would happen so much in, in short stories, or maybe it is just me, uh, or maybe it was the kind of novelist breaking through uh, in the Moffat's work. Before I translated his short stories, I hadn't read the letters of the Moflarty, edited by A. A. Kelly, and it's a great big book, four, four, five hundred pages, including including lots of the letters he wrote. On what a silly word, now in crawl into the the most adulterated world, so the continuous turmoil that he went to, his mind went to. On the against of his own astonishment, the lack of self confidence. And in his own work. I was a big no pain, go build the way he contradicts himself again and again. And at the time he was talking about the dilemma, the dilemma he was in and writing. And, and that was the most important to him. I think reading the, the letters, he, he was happiest when he was creating and writing. He says in one, at the moment, the job is short stories, short stories, short stories. I have done 10 in three weeks, and I have about 30 more to do. I think he used to work in blocks, he'd, he'd the writing become he'd write like mad, and then there might be months again, and he couldn't write. And when he couldn't write, he, he used to be frustrated. So uh, one might as well, um, one might as well write for the love of thing. My short stories fill that instinct. But he says later in the same letter, I sometimes longed for the enthusiasm of that period, when I wrote The Black Soul and the Cow's Death. Really, that was the greatest romance of my life, and will be, unfortunately. 
if one could only write like that again. But there's an old proverb that says, Ni gobadon, da, da, it has to. The sand rock cannot be on both beaches at the one time. He seemed to get depressed at times when he would finish writing something and send it off to, to, to um, the, an editor or a newspaper. He, kind of, he seemed to get that empty feeling. Uh, he said he had something to do. He said, I would do it. He said, when I get over the disgust, a finished story inspires. Um, but he, he is not always excited by his own writing, obviously. And at times, it's a drag for him. In May 27, he says, I have written nothing since I saw you the last, since I saw you last. And it seems I will never write again. Bloody awful. Hanging around, doing nothing. If this lasts much longer, I'll be out there on the streets again, organizing a revolution. <laughs> Writing is the only outlet for my energies. One week later, I'm still as dry as a strip of cow. And 10 days later, I am still very empty and melancholy. It seems that I am never going to write again or see any happiness in this world. I, would, I went down to the Iron Island for a few days and I, had a glorious, I was gloriously alive for three days, alone by the sea, fishing blackfish. Then I came back here again, turned new, and I'm again as melancholic as before. I don't read, I don't think joyously, or even with bitter strength. There is nothing. It's extraordinary. Have I written too much and become stale? I'm not ill. Neither do I, think, neither do I feel fit. Some instinct within me compels me to refrain from every bodily or mental activity that is not absolutely necessary. I eat, I sleep, I sit and wait like a wounded animal. But in the last line in the same letter, he says, shortly I may begin to write again. So about the art of writing in a letter to Charles Lair, and he says, Although life is miserable, art is beautiful. And even the most miserable and disgusting life is made beautiful by art. And a bit later, I am writing like hell. I'm going to Yes, a hill, a flay, la dinielle, a hick in the chair. A hick, a hill, Marshfield, and Smarven, Rod Nathalesco, Rod Ewing, Dulama, where Edward Garnet, so he don't hang a good of a shin, and Tom Harrah, a run a hand of flesh, it is three stella. For many years, Edward Garnet was a spittery mentor, a reader for John K., and a man who was very much involved in the London literary scene at the time. And he was a mentor too of Larty, especially in his, in his, well, to most of his life, especially in his earlier years. And I think they probably used to write each other at least once a week, sometimes two times a week, um, according to the letters. Um, thankfully, there were no texts or emails at the time that they'd be lost. Uh, he says, My dear friend, find the name of God, don't you drop me a line. I need a letter from you badly. I'm working very hard, sometimes nine to eight. And six days later, this is 1927. <coughs> Thanks very much for your, <coughs> kind, for your kind criticism of the assassin that's coming to Australia. I don't know how I could have embarked on such a blunder. Now, of course, I see it plainly, but only after you pointed it out. I see further to the cause of the blunder. The assassin was wrong in the first place, and in the second place, I was trying for the purpose of the market to write 70,000 words about a story that you don't even want to about 40,000 words. That was the cause of the disaster. I am never again going to try to write anything a certain length. I was Carmela. I remember your advice about the informer. If I had acted fully on it, it would have improved the book 50%. In this case also, if I had the strength at present to rewrite these chapters, the same improvement would result. I was uh, my failure to do justice to the assassin 
shows me my failings. I have yet to finish my apprenticeship, which indeed is very pleasant. Again, he liked the act of writing. As the world would be an empty, it would be very empty if I didn't have you to advise me, and more especially, I think always of you. When I'm writing, I wonder, now, what would Edward think of this? I was the Stelle, the Stelle, the Stelle, the the Black Soul, which is a we wrote together, and which is the most artistic thing I wrote, even though nobody appreciates it. We in uh, 1928, which is the Yan Shabai. is make Ashtu, the Yan Shabai. May Gera, Yeda Ausu, Yeda Ashtila Hele, Dagani Dog,